I'm Robin Williams, I'm an interventional radiologist and today we're going to talk about treating and then treat a patient who has a ruptured thoracic aortic aneurysm. So this is a man in his 70s who's presented with severe back pain radiating, radiating through to his chest and drop in blood pressure. He was brought in to a casualty department, Moribund, resuscitated and has been through the CT scanner. He's relatively stable now, but CT has confirmed the presence of a contained thoracic aortic aneurysm, which has ruptured. So these are relatively unusual cases. Most of these patients die long before they get to hospital, but once or twice a year we see this sort of scenario. So this patient has been brought to the operating room. We've already accessed the contralateral, the left common femoral artery, and placed a diagnostic catheter up into the aortic arch. We're now going to access the right side and insert a stiff guide wire. And this will allow us to introduce a thoracic aortic stent graft. All size measurements have been taken from the CT scan. So we're going to insert a guide wire. So we're inserting a standard J-tip guide wire up into the aortic arch followed by a pigtail caster and we'll take the two together around the aortic arch, it's a very safe way to cross the arch into the ascending aorta and we need maximum stability for the thoracic stain graft delivery systems, they're very large caliber so we'll remove this J-tip guide wire and replace it with a pre-curved Lundquist stiff guide wire these are known as coat hanger wires, so you need to be very careful with them. You can do an awful lot of damage. And to get a better imaging of the arch, we're going to come into a left anterior oblique. This will open the arch up. And these wires should only ever be advanced through a catheter. So take the catheter to where you want the tip of the wire. And then advance the stiff white guide wire through them. And you can see the pre-curved nature, we'll try and keep it away from the aortic valve. And then remove your catheter. And over this, we're going to introduce the thoracic stent graft. From the CT measurements, we know that we need a 30 millimeter by 150 millimeter thoracic stent graft. This is introduced over the stiff guide wire. We don't need to do an angiogram yet. We can wait until we've got this thoracic stent graft in place. So we advance this over the stiff guide wire, aiming to keep the tip of the wire in roughly the same place. If you allow it to move too much, there is a risk of causing dissection to the ascending thoracic aorta. I'm just going to let it go in a little more. We're going to take it just round into the arch. Angle again to really show the imaging. Show you show the configuration of the arch and then we're going to do a subtracted angiogram from the pigtail catheter. In reality we bring the pigtail catheter back into the descending thoracic aorta with a breath hold and then inject there. And there we can see the ruptured thoracic aneurysm we can also see the left subclavian artery, which will be the proximal extent of our coverage, and the celiac artery, which is the distal limit. So we'll take a reference image and place that across. We're just going to fade out for the time being. Just advance the stain graft a little more. 
fade in, confirm positioning, so we're well away from the left subclavian artery and we're above the celiac artery and we're across the ruptured segment. And we're going to gradually uncover the stent graft. You can see the stent graft has a bare proximal stent with a constrained tip. And fully uncover the stent graft. At this stage we need to deploy and release the tip of the stent graft. This is designed to stop wind socking and then we can remove the stent graft delivery system Pull that back. And now we need to repeat the angiogram and confirm positioning and also confirm exclusion of the aneurysm. So we can still see filling of the rupture segment. This is suggesting there's a large proximal ender leak. It's early filling, so it's a type 1 ender leak. So what we need to do is put a moulding balloon in and dilate this stent graft. So we're going to remove the delivery system over the stiff wire. With these very long wires it's helpful to take a loop of guide wire. This gives you an assistant chance to work. And we're going to insert the moulding balloon. So this is a compliant balloon, so it's not an angioplasty balloon. The more contrast you put into the balloon, the larger the diameter it will achieve. I'm just going to change the angle so we get the best view of the arch. We can see this when the proximal end markers are all aligned. And we're now going to inflate this. And these balloons take quite a large volume of contrast to inflate. And although they're compliant and relatively soft, even when they're inflated, it's still possible to cause damage. And in thoracic grass, you're particularly worried about migration. We're going to deflate. We're also going to mould the distal end. Our oversize is a little too big here because there's a mismatch between the distal and proximal aortic diameters that we were covering. So we're just going to make sure the graft is fully opposed. Deflate. And we'll now repeat the angiogram having moulded the proximal and distal ends of the stent grafts with a breath hold another flush injection which demonstrates exclusion of the ruptured aneurysm and rapid flow through the stented segment.